Welcome Battle Brothers, I am the Epic Narrator and today we're going to be painting a second edition Gretchen. Now what's different about today is I am not going to be thinning my paints at all. I'm going to be using my coat to arm paints straight from the pot and putting them straight on the model. Now some of you might be pulling your hair out and thinking what are you doing that is completely insane. Well. I just thought it'd be an interesting exercise to do because this is how I learned to paint when I was about 10 or 12 years old back in the 90s. It wasn't for a long time that I actually knew that anyone even mentioned anything about thinning out the paints, which might seem bizarre to people who are new to the hobby, but for the rest of us, I mean, especially when you're, you're a kid or when you've grown up without the internet, without YouTube, the only way that we learned how to paint was from White Dwarf or a painting guide, or maybe um, from a friend or down the shop. And if somebody didn't tell you, oh, well, maybe it's a good idea to thin your paint, then how are you going to know how to do it? So that's what we're going to do today. You have to stick around to the end to see how this model turns out. And before we do start painting, why not subscribe to the channel and give it a like. We've got plenty more 40k content there. First thing we're going to do is undercoat the model. Now, when I got this model, it was already undercoated and it had been manually undercoated as in somebody who just got a paintbrush and slopped it over the top. So no spray paint on this one. So I just took it outside, gave it a quick spray with Corax White. I got this model from an eBay job lot. There's a load of these guys hanging around. Also, I've got a second edition orc in that job lot as well. Follow the link above to see how I painted that guy. Of course, you can see he's not on his standard Games Workshop base. What I've done is I've used a third party base and some blue tack and super glue for some texture. It's still the lockdown here in the UK. I don't have anything to hand. So there we go. He's got a very rough base. The base coat is going to be Goblin Green for the skin. We're going to put Blood Red on his clothes. We're going to be using Wood Brown for maybe his shoes, his belt and also his gun. We're going to be using Chaos Black for the hat and any sort of exposed metal parts. And then after the black goes on, we're just going to be using some Coat to Arms Silver. So that's the base coat done, and from this picture of it, you can see he's looking suitably awful. Things to report are, is that no surprise, the paint is extremely hard to work with. Not only does it dry on your brush, but just dolloping it on is extremely hard to work it around and to even stay in the lines. You can see there's a lot of that white undercoat just shining through, which reminded me why we used to undercoat in black in those days, even for something like this, or I used to anyway, because it used to hide a multitude of sins. Next stage, I added some washes. So just green tone, red tone, using all army painter, because that's all I've got available to me at this moment in time. But this stage become pretty much redundant later on, and you will see why. So here is a before and after the wash is put on and after the wash has dried. Now, just adding any wash to any model is going to make a huge amount of difference. Brings out that contrast, just brings out the detail a lot more. And it's no different with this guy. Also, the wash has helped cover up those nasty bits of white undercoat that was showing through. Next stage, I'm going to be highlighting. So these are going to be some very quick and easy highlights going to be going with goblin green, sun yellow and a little bit of skull white for the skin. We're going to be going with blood red mixed with some flame orange for the clothes. Anything black just add a little bit of skull white in with the black and we're just going to be dry brushing just to get a little bit a little bit of definition on these guys. Also going to be dry brushing some silver on here which the silver you can see is extremely thick. And we're gonna paint on a few little gold bits here um, on the gun and on the helmet. So here he is with some basic highlights and a little bit of detail. Very messy, isn't he? Looks very blotchy, very chalky. Let's see if we can repair this guy. 
Now I'm gonna add a few little bits of detail and just do a little bit of tidying up, especially on the arm. I'm gonna go over that with the green again. I'm gonna pick out the eyes, pick out the teeth, and maybe pick out some rivets and stuff like that on the gun. My original plan was to stop here, but looking at this model, I'm not quite happy with it. I think we could do some more. So what I decided was to give him a wash in soft tone from Army Painter, just to try and gel him together a bit more. All of those edges and stuff, I mean, he looks painted, he's looking quite unnatural. You can see a lot of the dry brush marks on him. So that's why I decided to go with this soft tone to try and tie him together. So here he is with his wash before he dried. Now I thought that was the end of the story. Here's a picture of him and his wash had dried and I thought, you know what? He's done, that's good enough. So I started to try and take a few beauty photos of him. But I decided, no, he's not quite done yet. There's one more step that I could do that I think is going to raise him up to a new level. And that extra step has really made a difference to this model, I think. Even though he's painted with paint straight out of the bottle. If he was, I don't know, 10 feet away, you ain't going to notice, sire. Now that extra step was using a super black wash from coat to arms. And just going in and filling in some of those bits that are going to be in shadow. And pin lining any spots where a colour meets another colour. Here he is with some period models. This rhino in particular has a very sorry story. I remember burning this thing with a Bunsen burner when I must have been about 14 or 15 years old. So yeah, this rhino met a very untimely fate, unfortunately. If you want to see how I painted this Rogue Trader Space Marine, there's going to be a link above. Now let's conclude. So, this didn't go as badly as I expected. I thought it was going to be completely horrendous. But looking at this guy, I think he's quite passable as a rank and file member of an army, right? He's, he ain't going to be winning no Golden Demon Awards, that's for sure. But, you know, at a, at a glance, he doesn't look too bad. It didn't take very long to paint him. I'm sure you could uh, knock out a few of these grots very, very quickly, maybe even in an evening, right? Why not let me know what you think in the comments below? And that brings us to the end here now, brothers. So if you like this video, just give it a quick like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And why not subscribe to our chapter? We have plenty of 40K content there. This brings us to the end of Orc Week. Thank you, brothers. May the Emperor protect you through Nurgle's blight.